Um, talk to me about how many monitors have you got set up, you know, in, in the home desk where you're on uh, yeah, Four is a standard day. Yeah. And I have a, I have a TV on the wall in front of me um, that I watch the races on. So, um, so you've got, yeah, uh, yeah well, what's on there? So is, is live and dynamic odd sharing a monitor and then you've got, you know, Betfair and maybe your corporates on another monitor and, and yeah. what else? And, and then you've got Bet Angel. I've got Bet Angel. So I just like, I just like to to have Bet Angel open, um, you know, leading like coming up to a race, um, just with the the ladders. You know, I have the runners that I'm interested in, and I just want to see where the money stacked, or the you know, whether there's money stacking on the lay side or the back side. It's just it just yeah. helps me. So in my mind, anyway, I, I not doesn't and I'm not sure that everyone will necessarily agree, but in my mind, when I'm looking at the race, I'm looking at the, where, the, where the early money is because there's still there's still some weight in that early money from particularly from certain stables on certain mm -hmm. tracks um, yeah you know there's a, there's a bit of pre 9 a.m grubbery from a few from a few <laughs> yards and that happens and then you've got yeah. your live uh, which shows you shows you a good weight of money traded yeah. um, and which way that 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 money traded has forced the price and then you can you have a look at at the ladders to see what's behind it or what's in front of it um, it all and, and does it does have an impact on my wagering decisions. Um, like during, and then I use uh, I use Bed Angel for in play stuff when I go to the track, which is normally just around here, like on the Darling Downs. I, I bet in in the run. Oh, nice! And just talk, you know, seeing something on on Bed Angel and Betfair Live moving. If if the money's significantly going against something that you wanted to back, does that deter you from betting, or does that or is it stable dependent or do you just know, hey, I'm going to wait a couple of minutes because I know I'm going to get good odds, you know, if, if I'm patient? Yeah, so stable dependent is definitely a factor. Um, yeah. And you, uh, I suppose track conditions as well. Like sometimes you, sometimes you know that this is going to drift because it maps back and it's been on speed all day. Um, saw some plenty of those examples at Doobin on Saturday. Um, just it looked impossible to make ground as the day got on. So you've seen some horses drift in the market. Conversely, you see horses firm in the market that normally sit midfield or back that have drawn a bit better. And then you're saying to yourself, there's going to be some intent here because there's money early for it. It's very solid on the fair. I think this stable, this certain stable that I was looking at trains this horse was like, they, they, they're very good at adjusting uh, tactics to suit track. And right. sure enough, sure enough, this horse who normally sits uh, behind midfield, pinged the lead, sat behind the leader and, you know, trotted in. Bang. Um, so there's plenty yeah. of those examples and, mm -hmm. um, and that does have an effect on, um, on, my, on what I do. Finding myself doing a lot less early and a lot more late, prepared to take a little bit lesser price on, on some bets because I, I might have it $4 based on, what I saw, it, you know, the day before or doing the form or the morning of after scratchings after I've done the form and done the speed maps. Mm -hmm. And then the day changes and you've got to adjust that price with it. So while I thought I might have been looking to take 440, um, just the way the track played or the conditions had transpired throughout, throughout the day, it's more like a $3 chance. Yeah, because right. Those favors, because those favours, um, you know, you've got to give the horse extra lengths. Um, on, what you, on yeah. what you originally priced it, so. And are you are you doing that in your head, just updating the prices, or have you got your your numbers, you know, on one of your monitors, and, and you're updating them as as a bias presents itself, or as some betting um, information shows itself yeah. on the exchange? Are you updating well, as we go? I suppose, like, I'd be lying if I said it was all automated and all um, calculated and math. Like, yeah. I've got my prices, I've got punting form, um, I put my prices in, and then. I can adjust those sheets on the fly um, as yeah. I do it. Um, I do have a little bit of a database um, or handle on certain tracks and what I think certain parts of the tracks worth in lengths on a day. So, you know, I might have, you know, do a meeting and say, you know, just looking at the punting form data, I think that inside might have been off about three lengths based on the sectional time information that I've got in front of me. And right. I sort of can put that, I can sort of put a note of that, uh, you know, against that race or against that meeting. Um, yeah. 
So I try and do that. A little, that's as bad as technical as I get on it. But there's a little bit of gut feel as well. And I think that's just from knowing the jockeys and the trainers. You know, I don't really look outside of, of my own area in southeast Queensland. Like, uh, like a horse has popped up in a black book that ran here that sort of goes north to Rocky. I couldn't confidently sort of, you know, talk about the trainers and jockeys and, and different, you know, intents and, and market moves in that area. Cause I sort of, yeah, I sort of run out of petrol by the time I get the sunny coast as far north as I go. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, well, I think it's going, it's interesting, yeah. so, like picking your niche and, and being true to that and not, you know, are you betting it, you know, in Victoria during spring or, or New South Wales during autumn, is there any play there or, or is that, you know, just recreational oh, state or none? Yeah. Look, I've, look, I, I have a separate column, uh, in my spreadsheet or not a column but a, a separate sort of category where like if I do have a bet like I look I'd still have a recreational I would sort of class like as a rec bet like if a good like I'll follow plenty of people on Twitter I talk to plenty of pros you know per, you know personally over messages or whatever and we should all sh- share a little bit of info and whatever else and look I've backed this horse at seven dollars there's still six dollars available this thing will start three dollars if you want to have something on it if you're bored that sort of stuff yep. I'll still yep. jam that in. The, I'll still, you know, I'll probably have something on it if I'm, you know, if I've had me bets for the day or I'm finished for the day and there's a, something comes out. But as far as watching them and understanding the dynamics of those different jurisdictions, no, nah, I don't do it. Um, but yep. I still have a little bet like that every now and then because like, to, like I still knock off and have a beer and, you know, have a, you know, might, might watch a race at Perth or something, but, you know, betting yep. very, very small. Like it's just, you know, it's yeah. like meeting your mates at the pub and having a bet. If I take 300 bucks with me, for example, well, I'll just put that in the spreadsheet, you know, pub yeah. bets 300. That's, you know, <laughs> I, just, I keep it totally separate. I keep it totally separate. Yeah. 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 Have That's to. Good though. Obviously there's a fair bit of discipline in your punting. Um, just changing tack for a second. You're doing some stuff for the mailbag now where, you, you know, you, and you've got a paid service. How do you find that compared to betting for yourself? Um, yeah. Yeah. I suppose one thing I do did miss uh, about I found like betting is lonely. Like you know, uh, betting for, by yourself can be pretty lonely. Miss the camaraderie. Uh, you know, miss being part of a team. I suppose in a way. Um, and the thing that I that attracted me to the mailbag uh, was sort of how they go about it. So th- there was not a from what or how I do my service is is basically how I bet. So. Um, if there's something early at nine o'clock and, you know, we want to have something small on it, I can send it out if we want to take advantage of that price. Um, I always do it after nine to give everyone a chance to get on. Um, and then most of the stuff's late. So, um, you know, I can send out, uh, suggested bets or whatever else, you know, like five to seven minutes beforehand. It's good to be part of something. That's, that's what I like about it. Um, it keeps me accountable a bit too. It probably adds a little bit of pressure, to be honest. I think my first three days that I bet we lost. And, um, you know, that sort of graded me up a little bit probably. But, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, the service is going well. well you know, we're winning well. It's, um, I'm trying to be very selective with what we back and um, introducing some, some new eyes to watching races in provincial Queensland. Um, yeah. It puts a new meaning to sick beats. To, to a lot of the guys that don't <laughs> normally, a lot of people that don't normally watch racing in provincial Queensland, you know, tune into Dolby on a Sunday Arvo or Warwick on a Tuesday. Yeah, it's uh, it's yeah, it's a different it's a different watch altogether, that's for sure. But it is it is and good then, to be a part of it, too, yeah, for sure. Yeah, the boys. Um, yeah, we we obviously do a lot of stuff with the mailbag and and took notice of the punters club that you guys did. How did you find that experience? Where you you know in the penthouse or for the first one you you're at home chipping away yeah. and carrying. As I might add, and then the second one you're down in Melbourne. How do, how do you find that experience? Because I imagine there's going to be a few more over spring. Yeah, look, the first one was um, was when I was just zooming in, you know, from home. So I'd done all my work. I made a decision that I wasn't going to bet during the day because uh, you know I was invested as as a partner anyway in the in the kitty. So yeah. I just thought, you know what, I've done the work. I've had my bets. I'm just going to have a couple of beers and you know just have a day off basically and just enjoy it. Um, I can assure you that not every day of me sitting at home betting is what you saw on that first one <laughs> with all the carry on that went with it. Um, uh, but yeah, that's, yeah, that's, I just try to, I suppose, like I said, I've done all the work, so I was just happy to, you know, hopefully provide some comic relief and a bit of entertainment and just happened that, yeah. um, 
I bet like an absolute champion that day and uh, <laughs> <laughs> the results fell my way. The second one was different, uh, different experience, obviously being in the house with the boys. Once again, like a, sh- like a, sh- a lot of work goes into it to, in the bets, bet wise, um, you know, you're doing all the, pr- the all the work early uh, and then you can make some adjustments. But um, I think you find a little bit more pressure to perform and, I don't know. I've just, I suppose, you know, I've, I've been lucky to, I've had some results go my way in, in the two that I've done. So yeah. I sort of don't feel the pressure, but then, you know, there's other guys that have bet really well and just didn't get the luck on the day. So yeah. look, it's good. I yeah. hope um, for me, you know, there's, there's a plenty of positives and probably an equal amount of negative comments on, on what we do and how we do it, how we go about it. Um, but at the end of the day, we're trying to, we're trying to win number one, um, obviously, and, you know, get a return, um, trying to provide some, some content that's valuable to people that they can learn something from it, hopefully. Uh, and also, you know, try and have a bit of fun with it as well. Um, you know, it's all part of it. Yeah. Like I'm, I don't, it's, it's hard to bet for a punters club because realistically, if you're betting for a punters club and you're grinding out a 20% profit, like for what I do, on a day-to-day basis, if I could grow on a 20% profit every day, it would be like, it'll be sweet. You know, that's, that's yeah. great. That's a great day. Um, yeah. Obviously betting with a punters club, you probably should be having maybe a fat quaddy and a few all ups and a, mm-hmm. you know, all that sort of stuff. But it's yeah, yeah just not how I roll, but um, not personally. Well, but Scooty, Scooty, Scooty keeps trying, trying to win a million bucks. He keeps putting the pressure on you, blokes, to, to, to back, you know, back things at massive prices with, with huge stakes. So the pressure's on before you guys start. Um, 20%. You're very, very happy with that. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Or well, 20%, like, as I suppose, when you talk, you talk to a lot of pros doing this sort of, um, you know, interviews, I think everyone would be in the same boat. Like, 20% is, uh, yeah. you know. It's a great day. It's a, um, it's, a great, it's a great result. Just in terms of sharing resources and inspiring a few people, Shane, who would you, um, sorry, what, what websites you mentioned, punting form you use? Is there anything that, 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 People, you know, if they wanted to take their betting a bit more seriously, whether it's in Queensland or, or anywhere in Australia, what sort of resources would you recommend people use? Yeah, I'll, look, I'll, I can speak from, I'll speak from experience, obviously. Um, like, I think uh, this is not, not a plug either. This is just like, honestly, like the, bet, the information that's provided on Betfair, on the Betfair Hub and within Betfair Live is invaluable. Um, the right judges, uh, the right judges provide like a lot of content for Betfair, and I reckon that that, that shouldn't be discounted. Um, it's it's free. It's you know it's you just need to get you need to get across it. Um, one of the things that really helped me, I thought, was I stopped listening to tipsters. Like I know that's like um, I don't want to sound like a you know, negative. I think there's a place for that content in racing and mm-hmm. wagering everywhere, and yep. I'm not talking about. Um, yeah, so well, like, you know, the media tipsters and that sort of thing. Uh, you know, they, they're doing a job. They're providing content, and that's great. And like I said, there's a place for that, definitely. Um, a lot of a lot of good judges are there. You know, finding the winners only half the battle, um, and learning how to make money out of finding winners is the true. You know, is where is what it's about. Um, Staking is is a huge thing. I've I've read a lot, I've done a lot of research about on staking, listening to different people's um, opinions on staking, it, not just in racing but outside of racing as well. Um, you know, you guys do that um, sponsor that that podcast, the betting pod. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, which I've, yeah, the business of betting, which is I found an invaluable resource um, just onto the staking side of it. I mean, that's the number one thing. I, you probably hear that a lot when we talk to people. Finding winners, mm-hmm. you can find a winner, um, and that, but, you know, maximising your return on finding that winner based on what your probability you, you think it is winning compared to what the market's offering you is huge. I've taken yeah. a lot of that out of my betting. I've taken, I've stopped. Like I'm, it took me a long time, but letting winners go and watching them win and not losing your shit is really important step. Uh, I think yeah. in, in my wagering journey, you're happy to let one go if it's. If it's too short and it wins, well done. You know, well done to them for winning. I didn't back it. I'm not going to be upset. So the Betfair Hub has got uh, a great place to start. Um, reading about people that have been doing it for a long time. 
there's plenty of others out there, uh, particularly on Twitter. You know, there's lots of podcasts and interviews and things like that. Um, yeah. And not being afraid to, to listen to some, some wagering stuff outside of racing, you know, like, you know, sports betters, that sort of thing, I think. Really yeah. important. Um, I started, like, everything was believe my eye. Um, and it took me a little while to, to get across, to, to transfer, not a little while, but it, it took me some time to get that data of, you know, the sectional data and that sort of stuff and rating. So my progression was sectional data because I wanted to see the raw data. So, um, you know, if I've seen a horse rut, do something in a run and come from the back and, you know, we all get, when we all start off, you see this horse miss, you yeah. know, party it's away, flushing light runner. Okay. And then you start to, to apply the sectional times to that and, and how that looked on the day or in the race and whether it was, you know, just a week race, whatever else. And that, yep. and then from there went into that, into the more of that ratings, the ratings thing as well. So if you had asked me like four years ago, if I was a data man, I would like laugh basically. Um, my number one rule is know the horse. That's, that's where I started and that still remains number one. But um, yep. there's lots of, there's lots of resources out there to, to read about ratings. And there's a lot of good judges that, that just, you know, that rely on that ratings data as well. All that's also on the hub, I suppose. You've got some, you know, a number of good, go good guys yep. on there that provide so much content, so much info for free. So, um, yeah, that's basically, yeah, that, that's the first thing. That's the first thing I would do. Uh, and keeping records is another thing. Um, but yep. learning the, st learn the staking, learn the staking is like absolutely critical. Like, and it, I can, I can say that it's critical because, you know, I've been in the positions early days where I have dusted the bank or the majority of it, um, you know, just from getting ahead because you've, because you've seen them well and you might increase your stake and you know what happens next. Um, yeah. Pretty consistent, you know, um, those yeah. stories would be consistent. Um, getting outside, you know, getting outside your comfort zone is, um, it does add a lot of stress to it. So understanding staking is critical recording of the bets, understand where your money's coming and going. Because I thought I was so good at it, you know, I thought I could take exactors and trifectas pretty consistently and win at it until I started recording it um, in more detail and, and realise that I'm actually just a mug at the Joe Exotics. And they don't, me, me and the Joe Exotics don't get along, don't need to, don't need to have them. Um, you know, if I want to take an all up, if I want to take an all up because I like these two horses, I'll just back the first one and, and you know, maybe have a, a portion extra off the winnings mm -hmm. of the first one on the second one or something like that. Yeah. Yep. Rather than, than try and get too sucked in because, yeah, you just, you know, when you think one's immoral and you can try and, I might try and fatten up this. That yeah, sort of bedding's for the little birdie. You're reminding me of a few, few of my recent behaviours on the weekends where you've, you've started in front and you've, you've got a good head start and then you, um, yeah, you're drinking a bit of hero juice and, and you're betting up too much. So I need to get back yeah. on the hub myself, I think. Well, I think another thing is to, I, I spent a little bit of time and invested a little bit of money into uh, some mental health stuff as well. I found that uh, like really, really helpful. Um, yep. Not just to win, not just to manage my mental health after a winning day, but manage it after a losing day as well, like a winning day and a losing day. A winning yeah. day would normally consist of 7,000 glasses of red wine, you know, then 2,000 spiced rums or something, you know, well, I'd try to anyway. Um, yeah. And then want to go and, you know, and party. And then, uh, you know, the losing days would be 7,000 red wines, but, uh, you know, you know, more aggressive and negative and that sort of stuff. So, yeah. um, so I invested a fair bit of money and time into mental health and, and just mindset and things like that. Um, did some, did some training on mindset, um, spoke, spent time with a psychologist about it and that sort of thing as well. So, um, yeah. you know, basically if you lose your head, you're going to, you're going to dust your bank. Um, very yeah. easy to lose yeah. your head when you really, when you really zoom in and on a day, like on a day's results. So, one of the things I, I try to do, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying I'm good at it, uh, but try and zoom out. So, you know, I've got a network of, uh, you know, other pro punters that I know in, you know in chat groups and that sort of thing. They don't do racing necessarily, but, you know, they do they bet for a living and sport and whatever else. Um, 
and it's always good to sort of share your frustrations with them because they we can remind you that you know zoom out and you know you might have done your ass on this today and you've had three bets and they all got beat but you know remembering to breathe out you know and then zoom out is really important as well yeah um, you know you, you do lose you do lose faith in yourself a little bit or lose track of of sort of where you've come from and how long you've been doing it for and that, underestimate that at times i think mm -hmm. but your rational brain knows that you're going to have a bad run but your rational brain knows that like but you know dealing with it's another thing when it actually happens yeah. for sure yeah yeah you're, you're touching on a lot of themes that are consistent with pros and obviously the way you address these with with real professionalism like the, I've, I've never heard anyone invest in themselves um that much on the mental side like people obviously read being psychology articles and and do some meditation and um, exercise, you know, and, and acknowledge of the challenges, but it sounds like you, you know, really investing in that space. And um, we might actually, I, I might probe you after we finish to, to see if I can get you to pen an article for the hub, which sort of goes into a bit more detail on the resources you've mentioned today. Cause I think that there'll, there'll be some yeah real key takeaways and nuggets for people to, to, to dive a little deeper, whether it's a, a staking strategy or, or some, something that's good for your head. I think that'd be really valuable. Yeah, I've been involved in, in, you know, in, businesses that I work with as well as family businesses. And I suppose like treating this, treating this like a business is something that probably comes easy because that's what I'm used to doing. So, yeah. you know, if you're in business, you, you, you're investing in, you're investing in business coaching and, you know, and that sort of stuff. So I just apply the same principles basically to, because I know what it's, you know, I have an understanding that, you know, your business is as good as you, as your own mental health, you know, I suppose. And, and that's pretty key. Or it's the key yeah, thing to me anyway on that side of it. Definitely in this game that yeah, not not many bigger factors I think that determine your success in terms of how you approach it and um, how do you deal with the wins and the losses and, and everything that comes with it. Yeah, and by no means am I saying that I'm good at it, but um, I'm I'm working to be better at it every yeah. time. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and Twitter's Twitter's a good place to vent. Yeah, <laughs> get it out there and then racing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, Shane, um, I'll let you go, mate. I'm sure you've got a, a few bets to place today. I really appreciate your time. Um, and as I said, yeah, I'd love to follow up and, and probe you for a few more of those resources. Um, and yeah, thanks, thanks so much for taking the time. Yeah, no worries. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me on.